so Peter, how does your algorithm work, really, the chores algorithm? Well, I guess, you know, you, you know, you have 33 equals three times 11 and 91 equals seven times 13. And these numbers are, you know, really simple. You can do that with paper and pencil, or maybe even in your head. But once you get up to 10 digit numbers, it gets really hard to do it with paper and pencil. However, there's some clever tricks that will let you do it without trying all the possible factors. I mean, the obvious way to do it is try all possible factors. So you can take is n over, does three divide n, does five divide n, does seven divide n, does 11 divide n, et cetera. But this is really incredibly long. However, there are some very clever ways called the quadratic sieve and the number field sieve that you can factor numbers on a digital computer much faster than trial division. That's just the technique of dividing it by all the numbers smaller than it. However, these techniques are really slow and I don't think anybody has factored a 300 digit number that wasn't of some special form on a classical computer. So these techniques start running out around 300 digit numbers. On the other hand, a quantum computer, you could do 300 digit numbers quite easily if each step on a quantum computer took the same time as a step on a classical computer. So the way the quantum computers speed things up is not that they take each step faster than the classical computer would run that step, but that they use algorithms that take very many fewer steps than classical computers. The most important step is a quantum Fourier transform. Suppose you're trying to factor a number n. You can show that if you can find the period of the sequence a to the x mod n, so that's a, a squared mod n, a cubed mod n, a fourth mod n, dot, 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 then you can factor n. Now, unfortunately, for large n, the period of the sequence is large. It's around the same size as n. So for n 100 digit numbers, there's no way you can do this on a digital computer. However, you can do it with a quantum computer because you no, know, the state space of a quantum computer is large enough to hold the entire sequence. So what you do is you implicitly compute the sequence on a quantum computer, and then you use the Fourier transform to take the period. And from the period, you can get the factors of the number. Suppose you're trying to find the period of the sequence. So what you do is you take the sequence and put the computer in a superposition of all the numbers in the sequence. So I mean, one first number and this two second number and three third number and four fourth number, etc. So this is something you can do on a quantum computer. And then you take the Fourier transform and what the Fourier transform does, it gives you a number related to the period of the sequence. So let's say the period of the sequence is 11 and you're taking the Fourier transform over the number 2048. What you will get at the end of the algorithm is a multiple of 2048 over 11, which I believe is 186. So you might get 186, you might get twice 186, you might get three times 186, et cetera. If you can take the traction 372 over 2048, that will give you two over 11. And if you can find 11, you know the period of the sequence and that will let you factor. So what do you do? You have a fraction A over B where it's just approximately two over 11. And you want to round that fraction off to the nearest fraction with small numerator and denominator. And luckily there's a classical algorithm for this called continued fractions. So you get 372 divided by 2048. You use continued fractions to round it off. You get two over 11. And then 11 will give you the factors of the number you're trying to factor. Great. And um, when you developed your algorithm, at the same time, you also thought about um, the risk to cryptographic systems, or did you derive that later? How did that come about? Um, I mean, so when I developed my algorithm, it was well known that if you could factor numbers, you could break RSA codes. And the RSA code is the one that is used to protect most information on the internet. So I knew that factoring was a threat to um, cryptography. Great. Well, thank you so much, Peter. <laughs>